After playing their first five games without leaving Massachusetts, BU then faced a road game against a nationally ranked team, the University of Richmond. With their first possession, the Spiders put together an impressive touchdown drive for an early 7-3 lead. Minutes later, they were poised to strike again when Pablo Rodriguez turned the whole game around, intercepting this Greg Lilly pass in the end zone. Without warning, the Spiders were about to have a red nightmare. It was like Grant taking Richmond all over again. Here comes the pressure. Darty will loop it toward the end zone over the shoulder of Andrade. Did he make the catch? He did! Jason Andrade makes an unbelievable catch! It's a touchdown for Boston University! What a catch by Jason Andrade! Double slot set again as Paul Francisco is one of the slot men back in the game. The give is to Burwell on the delay. Big hole up the middle, 20, 15, 10. He's gone! Zach Burwell for a touchdown! The offense scored 38 unanswered points, while the defense, aptly named the Red Storm, forced eight Richmond turnovers. After this game, there would be tears in the BU locker room. This win guaranteed a winning season. It was a total team victory, and once again, the Terriers made it look easy. And Zach Burwell could have run all the way to Williamsburg without being touched on that play. Homecoming 93 was a happening at Nickerson Field. The 6-0 Terriers were greeted by a near sellout crowd, a crowd that was hungry to see history. We wanted the fan support, we wanted the student body support. And that's something that we had always hoped for, and now we finally got it. So a little nerves go through you, the pregame jitters, just a little more, because now you have the opportunity, you don't want it to let it slip away. And, and that was real exciting for us. We look and there's a whole sea of red, and the, and the whole grandstand is filled, and that, could, that was a great feeling. Never had a BU football team won seven straight games to start the season. To get it done, the Terriers would have to beat a Rhode Island team picked to finish last in the Yankee Conference preseason media poll. But by this time, everyone knew how much that poll meant. BU was picked to finish next to last. The Rams scored first when tight end Frank Marinella got loose behind the BU defense. The early jolt only seemed to inspire the dogs. On their first possession, third and 16 at midfield, Doherty goes deep for Jason Andrade. The circus catch gives Boston University a first and goal. And on the next play, Doherty showed off another wrinkle in this dangerous offense, the option. The junior quarterback threw 18 touchdown passes during his sparkling season, but he also ran for 11 others, second on the team to Zach Burwell. The Z train would get his own shot at the end zone on the very next drive. It was fourth and goal at the one, and Burwell powered in for the score. Just minutes later, when Rhode Island had a chance to tie the game from close range, the Terrier defense again took center stage. Three stops inside the two-yard line set up fourth and goal at the one. Hickson on the turn, the play action fake, he'll be sacked back at the nine yard line! The BU lead was still just 21 to 13 at halftime. The defense was hitting hard in a grinding physical game. And in the third quarter, a couple of guys named John rocked Nickerson Field. Third and 15, Hickson back to throw under a heavy rush. The ball is loose on the field. John Schaefer picks it up. He's at the 20, the 15, 10. Touchdown, John Schaefer. And not long after that came this. From the right side of the screen, senior linebacker John Hickey smothers a long field goal attempt and scoops it up for a touchdown. These two plays demoralized Rhode Island and energized the Terriers. The win moved BU into the top 10, earning them their first ever first place vote. But the most difficult part of their schedule was still to come. The last three conference games would be on the road. So it's no wonder that while the Terriers were enjoying the homecoming party, they were also thinking of home. Game eight, Durham, New Hampshire. And for the fourth week in a row, the Terriers fell behind in the first quarter. But their comeback skills had been proven, and they'd prove them again for the Wildcats. Another pattern was also well established. 
vital contributions from up and down the roster. For a retooled team with so many new faces in new positions, the Terriers were showing impressive depth. Sophomore linebacker Jose Condi got his first college start in the New Hampshire game, replacing the injured Mark Fossey. And all Condi did was lead the team in tackles with 12. Sophomore cornerback Lex Thornton fit right in with an aggressive, hard-hitting BU secondary. And among the junior college newcomers was defensive tackle Anthony Primavera, who's fun to watch both during and after the play. Junior linebacker Andrew Brennan, who set a school tackle record in 1991, was back after a career-threatening injury. All the pieces combined for another come-from-behind win. And when the Terriers returned to Boston against the overmatched University of Buffalo Bulls, more players could enjoy one more bow at home. In the trenches, the offensive and defensive lines can sometimes be taken for granted, but never by their teammates or coaches. Punter and place kicker Mike Morello led the team in scoring with 94 points. He missed just one of his 50 extra point attempts, and he tied the school record with 15 field goals. His most important kick of the year was still a few weeks away. The Terriers piled up 61 points against Buffalo, the second highest score in BU history. And with Doherty resting in the second half, quarterbacks Greg Moore and Chris Pinsons each threw their first touchdown pass of the season. No one could have imagined how crucial all three quarterbacks would be in the weeks ahead. During the first half of Game 10 with Connecticut, Doherty completed only 10 passes, but they covered 228 yards. The Terriers just couldn't get the ball into the end zone, and they trailed at the break for only the second time all year. On his way to the third best passing season in BU history, Doherty finished the day with a season high 339 yards, much of it after he sustained a separated right shoulder. But defense in a running game will win every time, and the Terriers had both all year long. In the last 10 minutes of a tie game, interceptions by Chris Helen and John Hickey gave the BU defense 20 takeaways in five weeks. And when Zach Burwell converted both into touchdowns, the Terriers had their 10th win. No BU team had ever done that. So it came down to one more game, one more win for a perfect regular season. If the Terriers were to stay unbeaten, though, they'd have to do it without Robert Doherty. His shoulder needed rest. So the call went out to fifth-year senior Greg Moore. It had been 54 weeks since Moore's last start. That loss in Maine, the eighth loss of the 1992 season, the last time BU lost a football game. But in this season of incredible stories, Moore started writing his own, battling into the end zone from four yards out. These were two of the highest scoring teams in the nation, and the first half featured a stunning offensive display, with each team rolling up more than 300 yards of offense. Steve Agee's 12-yard score gave the Dukes a 21-7 lead, and they might have had more, if not for a crucial turnover inside the BU five-yard line. But the red gun offense was moving the ball too, and Greg Moore had been studying his Robert Doherty handbook, scrambling, throwing on the run, giving his receivers time to get open. His favorite target was sophomore Ron Stevenson. Carnell Henderson was back in Boston with a sprained ankle, and like Moore, Stevenson was making the most of his chance. Desperate for a score to cut into the lead before halftime, BU faced a fourth and two at the James Madison 33-yard line. Greg Moore has to snap it. He does. He's back to throw and looking. He's got some time. Now he's under pressure. He fires to the right. Caught by Ron Stevenson. He's down the sideline. He will go in for the touchdown. Moore and Stevenson looked like they were just playing catch 11 times for 143 yards. But at halftime, there was certainly cause for concern. Defensively, we were getting blown off the ball. Up front, linebackers, we were getting blown off. And that, and that disgusted me and it disgusted the other guys. And we sort of grabbed ourselves in, in the locker room and said, hey, this can't go on. We have something that's right there for us. We don't want to be tied for Yankee Conference champs. That's, that's bull. We don't want that. The Red Storm gathered strength and slowly but unmistakably turned the momentum around. James Madison wasn't getting good yardage on first and second downs. On third downs, they converted only one of ten. And after a short punt by Scott Frazier from the back of his own end zone, the Terriers had their chance to pull even. Same red gun, new ammunition. Moore back to throw, plenty of time in the pocket, fires end zone, and it is a touchdown! A touchdown for Boston University! Carlton Myers goes to his knees to make the catch! The score was still tied into the fourth quarter, 
the Boston University defense continued its relentless punishing attack, allowing James Madison just 96 yards of offense in the second half. From the BU 20-yard line with 12 minutes to play, Greg Moore and Carlton Myers connected again, this time for 30 yards out to midfield. All of a sudden, the ball seemed to be bouncing BU's way. If good luck is when hard work meets opportunity, the Terriers had all three. They were prepared to seize this moment. Chris Kellen on the hole, the clean snap. Morello drives it up, and it is good! Nine minutes and one second left to go in this football game. Boston University has their first lead of the day. The last couple snaps were probably the most emotional snaps I've, I've, I've taken, you know, being on offense. And it was, you're lining up and you have tears in your eyes. The Boston University Terriers are 11 and 0. They are the Yankee Conference champions for 1993. Greg Moore had earned this ride from veteran lineman Matt Demshar and Tim Foley. He had thrown for a Boston University record 442 yards. For him to come in in a situation that he did in the 11th game of the season, having to win that football game to keep our perfect record and to win the conference outright, to me, talk about pressure. Now, he handled that unbelievably. And he played perhaps his best game of his career here at Boston University. Once a team rises to the occasion, um, every individual also rises to the occasion. Uh, when you have a Robert Doherty playing to, 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 to this level, then you're going to have a Greg Moore playing to this level. Um, you know, when you have a Cardell Henderson playing to this level, you're going to have a Ronnie Stevenson also stepping up because, you know, if, if you're next to greatness, you, you better. I never did I think that we had to go undefeated in our last game to win the conference outright. To me, that is something in its own self uh, that is, is, should tell you something about the conference that we play in, but it tells you a great deal about our players, too.